This video will explore help for people made homeless by enemy action during the war. Rest centres provided food and shelter for a limited period for those made homeless by enemy action until arrangements were made for bulletin or to stay with friends. Halls, theatres, churches and schools were all used as rest centres. People arrived at rest centres in a bad state. Tired, shocked and hungry, badly clothed or even injured. So staff tried to always have a cheery atmosphere while they prepared hot drinks and a hot midday meal. Staff were urged to see that those people who avail themselves of the facilities offered at the centres are treated with every kindness, every kindness and courtesy and are made as comfortable as possible after their try and ordeal. J.W. Barnes, the rest centre's controlling officer, hoped that the helpers and officials will remember that those persons attending the rest centres may have lost their homes, relatives and personal belongings and it is the duty of all members of staff to console and devote their energies to alleviating their mental anxieties as far as possible by kindly acts and words and to give all possible advice. He reminded staff of the importance of their work. The voluntary staffs at the centres have a wonderful opportunity for service at a time when these people are passing through the greatest tragedy of their life. You will not fail them. On the 29th of April 1942, 17 rest centres were brought into use and over 2,000 homeless people were fed and accommodated. Unfortunately, two rest centres at Poppleton Road and the Honesty Girls Club were damaged and made unusable. Rest centres were not the only help available. Emergency feed-in centres served meals while mobile canteens served various parts of the city for the homeless and for demolition squads. Assistance boards compensated people who needed help to replace items of clothing or furniture that had been damaged or destroyed in air raids. Additionally, the Lord Mayor's National Air Raid Distress Fund also assisted people made homeless by enemy action. Throughout the war, several types of people were billeted, meaning given temporary accommodation, including people who could no longer live in their homes, school children and children with their mothers from evacuable areas, and people suitable for billeting on private householders. Local councils encouraged mutual aid packs between householders in which people would make definite arrangements with a friend or relative living at least half a mile away. This was so they would have somewhere to stay if their home was destroyed in an air raid strike. Rest centres could even issue travel vouchers for homeless people who made private arrangements to stay with friends or relatives in different areas. A report by the Civil Defence Emergency Committee shows that while many of those who were made homeless on the 29th of April 1942 made their own arrangements to stay with family and friends, the Women's Voluntary Service helped make arrangements for others. For instance, 12 children were sent to Hovenham Lodge and 25 war workers were accommodated at the institution. In total, an estimated 1,660 people were billeted in the aftermath of this strike.